Pull up on they ass, don't get hit, I'm with the shit like I gotta pull up on my ass, nigga And they making up stories, say anything, they just mad cause my ass gon' be posted, nigga, like some posters, hit his own deck, act up, get toasted Come through here, thank me slip and get your ass roasted Yo, oh, yo, 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 what's up, YouTube? I'm back, one another banger with y'all, man. If you're new to the channel, go that like button, subscribe, and go come. You're going to talk about the Baltimore rap scene in 2014. And I ain't going to lie, this right here is one of the most classic moments of the city, uh, through the state of Maryland, and even kind of for hip-hop. You know, we never get that light shed on us, but this, 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 like, where I'm from, we have a lot of talent. Like, literally, there's a lot of talent in that city, but the industry... Always it has a hand pick with what artists probably look good. Now I ain't gonna lie, like if Lil Scooter was still alive, he'll probably be one of those artists. But we gonna talk about the rap scene today. So ten years ago was I was in eleventh grade. Um, on my phone, I was bumping these four artists. I'm gonna mention this video. Well, of course we got other artists as far as like Test for One. No, rest in peace to G Rock. Uh, Go get a slick. Uh, who else was? Uh, I know GMG Tato. Shout out to him. Shout out to all the rest of the guys. Oh, Tess one that was also signed to Free Bands, and we got uh, Aunt Glizzy ASAP. So a lot of guys was making moves, man, trying to make a way out of the city. And Young Moose one of the first artists that I definitely gravitated to. So man, him from the, for those who don't know, me and Moose from the same hood, technically down the hill. His people's know my people's, and uh, it's a small world. So I was got to see him make a make a make a, a name for himself. I know. He He's still currently making music, still striving, and uh, and I wish the best for him, man. He's definitely talented. I love his storytelling as a rapper and as an artist as well. So I think that Moose definitely got to go more out of his comfort zone if he really wants to take himself to the next level. And also within that 2014 era, he's, he collaborated with artists such as like Slick Go Getter. I know he made a few songs with President Dave or Lil Scooter. Now I'm I'm so mad never seen a YG Tay in a Moose song. I'm so mad. Well, he made songs with other people. He made some with Lil Stacks. So shout out for that song. So check that, check that track out, Going Dumb. But as I was saying, uh, the Baltimore rap scene was definitely was a classic time for me to definitely absorb. Like, I was right in the area when they shot the 05 Zone video. And during that time period, Moose was doing a lot of interviews. He was trying to get signed, you know. And also, through the help of uh, Boosie's cousin, Donkey, he definitely helped the lead way for him in that time period. <clears throat> And Mr. President Davo. President Davo is also an up and coming artist in Baltimore from that 2014. He made a banger for the city. I don't want to I don't want to be a player. He remixed the uh the Fat Joe and uh Big Punisher. Uh you know that that one song Vodiqua. I don't want be no player of original freestyle. So that song is a banger itself. Just that melody and that different sound. That was a breath air, breath, breath of fresh air from the city. And, and knowing that how smart Dave was, which for those who don't know, he actually graduated from Polytechnical High School. So he's very talented. His wordplay was pretty good. He always had different ideas for the city. And he was never the type of rapper. I mean, of course he was from the streets, but still, like, he definitely was the one that was trying to, you know, show love to everybody. But he's always, you know, people you got to watch out. The ones that's close to you, the ones, you know, the area you in. So it's saying, unfortunately, that President Dave lost his life, man. But he definitely... Definitely that that three rated rated underrated three point five. That's what put me on that twenty fourteen mark and uh Dang, President Dave, I really wish he was more hater. And he was just getting back on his music edge. I know he had a lot of couple setbacks within the last few years, but President Dave was definitely was going to make a run for it. Like, he was hot in New York. I heard he had plays in Atlanta, Miami, Florida. So that's crazy. And also, I forgot to mention the Blue Benjamin boy. I'm going to put him in the 2014 mark because they was like, ah, they was right in that era, 2014 and 16. So also, them, they made a running name for themselves. A lot of people, the band Hunter Izzy. Uh, who else did I didn't get to mention? You got uh, Lil Chris. Like, so many artists that was just, just coming hard that year. And, like, just, it was like, it was like we was trying to break in that leeway for the door. Even uh, Take Bang. And rest in peace to all the rappers that lost their lives. Like I said, G Ra. You got uh, <clears throat> Gorgeous Dro and uh, a lot, like so many different artists I didn't get a chance to mention. But this one was a big hurt for the city. When we lost school in 2016, it definitely hurt to see a lot. It changed the way how like it was supposed to be, you know. Even though most and all the other guys still alive, this definitely was the this hurt us the most in that time period. I don't care what nobody say. Like his storytelling, his raw, his realness, just what he brought to the mic was just unheard of for the city. And uh I know in that and they got realized in that time period, the Baltimore club scene was dying off. So the music, the rap rap music scene, it definitely was like a um a gap that needed to be filled, and it definitely held it down for a few years. Did a lot of uh, 
Good things for the city, you know. But only thing I'm mad that these rappers never got a chance to do for those who had beef. I wish they would have would, would, would just collaborated. The problem with the rappers in my city, we always got to go to our out-of-town rapper, somebody with a big name, you know, probably like a B-level rapper or, you know, just looking for a cosign. We really don't need that. And I think that the Eric is kind of getting these rappers' heads sometimes. You know, different hoods don't rock with each other, and that's okay. But it is what it is. But like I said, this 2014 mark was definitely one of the best run rap Rap runs, I sing, besides the industry, underground, if not one of the best underground, you know, come-ups, you know. I've only watched these artists grow a little bit. You know, some they had trouble with the law, they kind of was into the street. So, it was a lot of, you know, they were just trying to make a name for themselves in this rap, bro. Just try to go legit and change their family lines. But, unfortunately, most of them didn't get a chance to do that, you know. So, I'm glad they left the legacy left behind with their families and all the other things. Last but not least, we got Mr. Spender. YGGT, man. Now, when I heard that one song from 2014, Rich Before Rap 2, we making these trips, we even up. Yo, I heard that in this process, yo. Who the hell is that? YGGT. I'm like, yo, that guy got potential. Of course, he rised up. He made industry connections, but I think the problem with YGGT, like, why are you still in Baltimore? He was one of the artists that I really, like, okay, like, this guy, like, yo, will be bumping? Like, yo, will you put that music on your phone? You just throw it on? He was consistent with his music too, you know, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's, and it's crazy. Like, him and your know, little school that had the beef. You know, check that video. I'll check out the video somewhere in the in my video section. Y'all go check that out. So anyway, you know, he had problems. And he squashed the beef, you know, of course, and everything. But just too many uh, uh, behind the scene problems that was holding him back as an artist. It was very distracting because I think why you take with a solely focus on the music, he'll be a been a way better artist. He would not be sitting in prison right now. I'm not saying that, you know, it may be about that, you know, cool, but it's like the fact that that can hold you back. Like, you could be, and you like the fucking bread went on your crew. Like, you really are like the, you could be like a, a record label owner, still signing more artists, but you're going to bounce back when you come home. But uh, yeah, YGT was definitely one of them artists that I enjoyed listening to in 2014. So these four artists that I mentioned right here, they was the ones I gratitude to. But everybody else, oh yeah, GGL Slick, like I, you know, mentioned at the beginning of the video. Uh, you know, G-Rock, rest in peace. Um, you know, CTM Ball, everybody. Uh, uh, G you know, GMG Tato. So many artists. And it's, and it's good that, like, in that time period, it gave all the guys in the city, all females too. You know, shout out to them. They, you know, give us the lead with it, start rapping, and they brought that to the table. So that's all I got to say. If you're new to the channel, go hit that like button, subscribe, go comment. I'll be back with another video with you folks. Y'all stay blessed. And I'm out with it, world. Peace. Smoking skunky fucking niggas, bitches. The hood 